Hello friends, welcome to AI Flux. This week marks the beginning of Computex 2023 in Taiwan, and most importantly, the most anticipated event at Computex is NVIDIA's new announcements for 2023. So basically this is a follow-up of some of the information we got back in March at GDC 2023, where NVIDIA released the Hopper GPU generation and a few hints as to what they plan to do with their HGX platform. However, now we know a ton more, we have hands-on with new hardware, and we have really a full picture of a combination of software and hardware integration, along with really interesting unexpected acquisitions that NVIDIA has now put together to create an incredible new supercomputing platform purely bent on AI. What NVIDIA is calling this platform is the NVIDIA DGX GH200. This is comprised roughly of three pieces. So the first component of these three is the Hopper GPU core, specifically the one that has 96 gigs of HPM3, which can talk at about uh, four terabytes a second with the GPU itself. Now, the two remaining bits were released officially at Computex. The first most important one, uh, it might be unexpected. Prior, when you think about GPU compute, you think about NVIDIA GPUs tied to x86 Intel CPUs. However, NVIDIA thought that that wasn't good enough, so they created their own new spec of ARM CPU called Grace. And these are kind of crazy because one of these CPUs can match about 80% the performance of the fastest AMD EPIC CPU currently, while being about twice as power efficient. And the reasoning around this is kind of interesting. And there are a few bits of this that haven't really been mentioned very often, even in more of the hardware realms of YouTube. So what I find most interesting about this is the fact that all of the RAM is actually on board. So it's very similar to like how Apple has done their packaging with uh, CPU and RAM. So it's not HBM, but the RAM has to be very close to the die to make any of this make sense. And there are two specific packages that are available. So one of these packages is two gray CPUs on the same compute board with all the RAM. And the other, which I think is far more interesting, is actually one Grace CPU with a Hopper GPU right next to it. And the importance of these two configurations is that both of them can actually use NVLink to share memory either between the two CPU configuration or between the GPU CPU combination, which is kind of interesting because what this means is if the Hopper GPU can share the around 480 gigabytes of RAM available to one of the Grace CPUs, it means that you effectively using a trick similar to to swap space in Linux, you can basically have a GPU that has 600 gigabytes of video memory, which in the case of the CPU-GPU combination, that's 480 gigs of LPDDR5X ECC memory on the CPU side and 96 gigs of HBM3 memory on the GPU side. But with NVLink, it can still talk to each other. And for a reference, total, what you're looking at in terms of bandwidth with the CPU component is about 900 gigabytes per second back and forth. And this might seem kind of, you know, like, like what is that number, right? And to put this in perspective, a 16 lane Gen 5 PCIe lane only provides 64 gigabytes per second. Now, the real secret sauce of all of this harkens back to a pretty weird weird acquisition that NVIDIA made right after their stock tanked after the end of the GPU mining boom. So NVIDIA bought a company called Mellanox. Mellanox previously was really a company that only made high-end server grade networking hardware. So they made 100 gig NICs, 200 gig NICs. Since their acquisition, they offer up to 400 gigabyte per second NIC, faster than your average ethernet card or ethernet port on your system, even if you're using 10 gigabit. What's really crazy is one, NVIDIA, you know, improved technology in a way. So they now have a bespoke switch chip that's been developed at NVIDIA to help act as a switch for PCI lanes and memory. And also, they've developed a new edge interface for networking that actually has compute built in, which is a new push that was really pioneered at Amazon in their data centers to get the idea of getting all network related compute out of the CPU and towards the edge. So what this means is that Nvidia can now interconnect up to 256 of these Hopper GPU cores and end up with a system that has over 150 terabytes of GPU memory. And when you address it, uh, and this is where their software and their heart and their just platform engineering comes in, you can actually address this as if it was all one single huge GPU made up of 256 GPU dies, over 150 terabytes of memory, 
and backed by incredibly fast CPU processing with their Grace CPUs. This is nuts because this system with only 256 units is actually scoring within the top 500 supercomputers in the world. And these are exascale, data center scale supercomputers. And one thing that I think is kind of interesting is the image that NVIDIA released to this. Ironically, if you're looking at it from afar, and I think this is why their whole presentation was in this bizarre like 16400 aspect ratio. If you look at this image and you just glance at it, you think, oh, like what a nice 2U server that looks kind of weird. But uh, actually, this is 24 racks of hardware placed side to side. And this is what uh, the... 200 actually looks like. I think it's also important to note the HGX format and the PCIe format of the H100 are still being offered. So if you want to use PCIe or if you want to use your uh, HGX platform, those are still available. And those are both still very important because um, remember, NVLink was actually initially created as the next improvement of SLI. You know, it was even wild to see NVIDIA with HGX implementing NVLink for intra-GPU communication and sharing of GPU memory. And basically this is the next logical step in scaling. The reason this is important is, is all in all, in time, what NVIDIA is trying to produce compared with other AI accelerators is they want to have the best platform to build AI systems on, period. A lot of people have messaged me or I've seen a lot of discussions on forums of people saying, oh, well, like, you know, Google has more data centers. Google has their TPU v4 or even their TPU v5, which if you compare it to the uh, SXM5, which is the HGX version of the H100, people will say, oh, well, they're competing directly with Google's TPU pods. The TPU v4 has a 300 gigabyte per second interconnect and 32 gigs of HPM per chip, which means, you know, per slab, that's 131 terabytes. In theory, much greater throughput, because um, technically within one TPU v4 pod, you you have one petabyte per second of throughput. The units get a little mixed up, but uh, and the TPU v5 will be really interesting. But what you have to remember is that T Google TPUs are highly, highly specialized. And what's interesting is this the platform is not really meant to be shared. And Google's general takeaway from the latest kind of quantum leap in AI, you could say, is that they want to share less and less. So the likelihood that the TPU platform of email programming and uh, accelerated compute is likely to not become very pervasive. Um, DeepMind will probably continue using it. Uh, DeepMind will probably continue to use it to um, augment some of their uh, deep learning they're trying to do with quantum computing. But there's a reason that with the latest push in AI processing and AI compute, that even Google has invested heavily into NVIDIA-based platforms. Curiously enough, Google, by dollar amount and by units purchased, at least in 2023, is the largest customer of NVIDIA so far that we publicly know about. I wanted to mention that because there are a lot of people who are very much TPU fans and I have one of like the Coral compute modules and they're quite cool. Ironically enough, make fun of Azure as you will. Azure has actually developed systems that can deploy more GPUs at scale than Google Cloud, at least in their public offering. I, I think, frankly, the heterogeneous deployments that NVIDIA offers with their H100 GPUs are likely still going to be better than the TPUs long-term, just in terms of who's using them, who's developing on them. And for the same reasons, I think it's kind of candid at that this is why OpenAI probably decided to use NVIDIA systems and not TPUs, also because they're direct competitors. But anyway, so this is very, very exciting. Um, it's really cool to see the AI and HPC or high-performance computing systems kind of diverge in their own ways and to see NVIDIA finally reach a sort of enterprise product market fit that um, leverages every angle of their software and hardware arms. As a result of this, I don't think it's very surprising that NVIDIA is now a trillion dollar company. It'll be very interesting to see where they go as a business. But, um, but yeah, this is very exciting. It'll be great to see where this goes with NVIDIA. Again, we're gonna really, really hope that uh, Taiwan yes, doesn't so get targeted by any uh, large communist regimes. And uh, as always, I hope you learned something. If you like this content, please subscribe and like the video. It really helps us and we have to post less uh, shorts with AI content when we do that. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next one.